Hello YouTube, this is Amy's Bro. How are we doing today? So, <clears throat> this will be uh, the second episode for the Christmas um, game show reviews that we're going to be doing. Episode 3 was scheduled to be tomorrow night. However, I'm going to explain at the end of this video uh, what's going to actually happen and what I'm going to do for a make good <clears throat> besides the fact. So, stick around. Um, <clears throat> so, the show we are discussing tonight is a show which quickly became a favorite of mine, and I actually have to give a shout out to Game Show Garbage for this one, because if it wasn't for them, I would not have heard of it, and I'm glad I did. The show we are talking about is... Talk About. <laughs> it is a game show which aired on the CBC from 1989 to 1991 and was hosted by arguably in my opinion one of the greatest game show hosts that not many people again have ever heard of and it's a damn shame his name is Wayne Cox and the show has a very simple rule set unlike the show we talked about last night which was the Mad Dash which had rules about wins and losses and then board spaces but that one also is dealing with a board game concept this one is simply talking about a subject a person place or thing and as mr cox has explained the more you talk the more uh, excuse me the better your chance of winning there are two ways to <clears throat> win points for a puzzle and we're going to get to that in a second. Um, first off, here's your main rule. A match in Talk About runs to 15 points. Now, how do we score the points? Well, here's how. There are two teams. Now, the two teams are usually best friends, again, brother, sister, some type of relation. And they will compete. <clears throat> with one being the returning champion, if there is a returning champion, I'll explain that also. And <clears throat> the uh, challenger gets to go first usually, and the champion has to go off to the soundproof area, soundproof area and put on some headphones. The challenger gets to choose from one of two subjects and then they have to figure out which one's going to talk first. The person who talks gets 20 seconds to try and figure out 10 keywords which are used to describe that particular person, place, or thing. For every one they get right, one point is put in a bank. If after 40 seconds, 20 seconds for both of the contestants each, if after, 20, if after a total of 40 seconds, they do not get all 10, then the points are still put in the pot. However, all the words that they did uncover are not allowed to be used by the opposing team. They only get the word, that, the word or words that weren't uncovered, which hopefully can make it harder for them to steal the points. Think of it like Family Feud when a family is trying to run the board <clears throat> my team's trying to run the board and if they do they win all the money in the pot if they don't then the opposing team gets one chance to try to steal all the money well here that's not the case but the more words you leave them the easier it's going to be and also but also the less point excuse me but also and also uh less points they can still earn. Because remember, it's only one point for every word you uncovered. They don't get the extra points for the um, for using the other words. So, you may only get three words, that's three points in the pot, but guess what? That's the only three points they get. See what I mean? Trust me, it's really interesting and I probably butchered that a little bit, but that's the general idea. Now, it is possible that a team can run the board. If they run the board, 
that scores what is called a perfect 10. They get all 10 points automatically and a $500 cash bonus for successfully being able to pull it off. So, if one team was able to do it twice, they would get $1,000. Oh, by the way, they would also win the game because that would be 20 points and you only need 15 to win the game. A team that wins <clears throat> five games uh, retires undefeated and wins a grand and wins a uh, and wins one thousand dollars and they are literally called grand champions as in the final game is called the grand game for them. But we have to get through the bonus round and the bonus round is even uh, very similar, if not exactly as similar, to the front game. One thing I forgot to mention. In the front game and the bonus game, uh, what happens is the team has to choose which topic they're going to talk about. Again, it is a person, place, or thing that they will be discussing for the, for the 40 total seconds. So there you go. Now, it's $500 if you can get the perfect 10 in the front game. In the main game, in the bonus game, it's a lot different because now it's a 20 second time limit. Oh, and you only get one chance to clear the board. Now, let's say you can clear the board. Well, that's $2,000 for your team's efforts, and it's very hard to do. I've only seen a clip of it happen once, but I don't know how many times it's actually been done uh, in the history of the program from 1989 to 1991. If, however, they can't clear the board, the following happens. You get $100 for every answer, you un for every word you uncover. The maximum you can get without getting the perfect 10 is $900 or 9 seconds. You then have to choose, make a decision. Do you play double or nothing? To do this, what happens is, with one second for every word you've uncovered, your po your, excuse me, your partner, or said opponent, your partner has to try and figure out the word or words, and it only has to be one, that you didn't say. If they do, you double the money from the pot and you win the prize. If you don't, you leave with nothing, but you continue on to the next game. Again, as I've already mentioned, Champions appear on the show for five games, and if they win all five games, they win $1,000 and retire undefeated. And I have not seen a, <clears throat> excuse me, a grand uh, game winner yet. I've seen somebody who was eligible for it, but they lost in the, in the end. What is there to say about the show? It is arguably one of the greatest game shows that you probably have not seen. While yes, it did air on the USA Network, probably not a lot of people knew about it. Which is a shame because USA Network used to be a haven for game shows. I mean, they did run at one time, one of my all-time favorites, in Bullseye. They also ran Mike Darrow's Jackpot. And we may talk about that, by the way, uh, in the future because it does have a uh, Canadian heritage as well as the $40,000 chain reaction. I might actually talk about Darrow's um, jackpot in the future though. But this show was something that needs to be seen. Oh, I should mention the front game. If you are an avid fan of the Lifetime channel, you will know that in 1990 there was a game show hosted by Louise Duard called Rodeo Drive. Well, the first round of the game actually used a round where the contestant had to try to say one word out of a possible seven. The only difference there is if they were successful in doing it, they won a set number of points. And the, if the contestants that weren't guessing the word predicted correctly whether or not they would or wouldn't say it, they got 50 points a pop. So, that is the difference between Rodeo Drive and Talk About. 
and talk about it's two teams competing against each other. In the first round of Rodeo Drive, it's you have to say one word in 15 seconds. And I've seen that done actually more often than I've seen a perfect 10 scored. But now back to what's the back to Rodeo Drive? Back to talk about. This game show, I can easily see why it is a very uh it was a very well done game show. It was a very simple uh, rule sheet to go over. Unlike, like I said, the rather confusing rule sheet that may have been in um, the Mad Dash with the way they did the wins and losses and all that good stuff. This one, I honestly believe, should have gone on longer, but as one of the game show contemporaries known as uh, game show garbage, aka Sigma fan, has said, because of the changing landscape of game shows or of television in the 1990s, it didn't go. And also the fact that apparently, not only in the US, but in Canada, it wasn't that big a hit. Real shame, too, because Wayne Cox is one of the greatest game show hosts, like I said, you probably have never heard of. And let me be real when I say this. Okay, this, uh, a host like him, man, I wonder if he's still around and what he's doing nowadays. Because I think we all could appreciate getting to see his warm and charming personality, and especially his great uh, impersonations, especially of Ralph Cramden, <laughs> in one very memorable episode. <clears throat> when, um, <clears throat> one of the options was, um, Bugs Bunny, and the other one was Ed Norton. Anyway, so that is uh, talk about. I have talked about this actually for 12 minutes, which is actually surprising to me. <laughs> but it is definitely a show you need to check out, and I hope you do. Um, now I'm going to bring up a minor schedule change. Originally, tomorrow night I was going to do Pitfall. However, because of extenuating circumstances, <clears throat> I will not be covering it like I originally promised. However, I'm going to do a make good. It will be covered on the 25th, in other words, Christmas day, Christmas morning. So you're going to get your Christmas present from me. I'm also considering on Boxing Day, the 26th, doing another one, doing another game show, but this one will be from Britain, and this one will be Bob's Full House. And then also, on January 1st, there is one thing I'm considering really doing, and that is finally doing the game show review that I had been putting off for the longest time. We're going to go is it Mr. Rogers and Dusty Ben? And you'll know exactly who I'm talking about if you've ever seen it. Three, two, one. I will see you on the on Christmas Day when we watch out for the pitfalls with Pitfall. I'll see you then, friends. Take care. Bye-bye.